I'm Jessica. And I'm Emily. And in this hangout, we will be discussing the Rao Lecture with Dr. Julie Dixon and Alex Dixon. Julie Dixon is a noted professor of math education at the University of Central Florida. Alex um, is her daughter, and she is a student in Orlando. While she was undergoing brain surgery at 12, Alex suffered a debilitating stroke that left her partially paralyzed with severe speech impairment. As well as discussing um, points from the lecture, we will be relating the points to articles and field placement experiences. Okay, so the stroke that Alex had left her categorized as a special needs student. And I really like how um, in the lecture, Julie discussed how um, Common Core is really was really helpful to her and is helpful to other special needs students because um, it kind of gives them multiple different ways to go about learning. I know especially, like, specifically she talked about math and how Common Core has multiple different ways of, of solving a problem. For example, in my placement, they're learning uh, multiplication, and they've learned different strategies with, like, number bonds, arrays, um, repeated addition. There's all these different ways that they can go about solving multiplication problems. And I think that that's really important because learning something one way might be really easy for one student but not for another student. And um, it might be especially hard for a special needs student to learn something that way. So with Common Core, it gives them multiple different ways so that that special needs student can find a way that's really, really good for them and then use that way. They're not limited to um, certain options. And in the article that I read, it talked about um, how the U.S. has one of the highest dropout rates in all of the industrialized countries of the world. And part of that might have been because before Common Core, things kind of were like, it's this one way that you have to know how to do it. And that's really hard and frustrating for students. So that could have been one reason they were dropping out. It also talked about how um, students can use podcasts as a way of assessing information learned. So instead of giving students a typical assessment where they have to sit down and take a test, you can give them this way that they think is fun. They're recording a podcast, and then they're summarizing what they learned. Like, for example, in the article, um, it was the students made a podcast to summarize their lab experiment that they did on uh, marine snails. So I feel like that's a way to assess learning in a not typical way that might be less intimidating to any student, especially a special needs student. Okay, um, so some of the things that I liked in the RAL lecture was from Alex. Um, because she was a special needs student, she wanted to point out that just because she's a special needs student doesn't mean that she's not smart. So I just wanted to show this picture real quick because um, we actually got to um, be in a class with her and she got to observe our class and it was cool just to see um, how she interacted with all of us and Honestly, if she hadn't have told us, I wouldn't have known that she had had a stroke. Um, so some of the things that she said was that um, because she's special needs, it just takes longer. It doesn't mean that they're not smart, um, but it's important to give your students motivation, commitment, and different resources. So some of the resources that could be used could relate to uh, my article, which is potential of podcasts. And um, you could just use that as an example of differentiated instruction. There's a quote uh, from Dr. Yang, who's a professor of our education, and he said, learning does not happen through direct, direct knowledge transmission. So providing the different resources for these students with disabilities to learn can be very beneficial for them. Um, another thing from my article uh, was from Melanie Peck, who's an art teacher. Um, for about 12 years said that be sure to allow your students to make mistakes and have time to discover on their own. Um, so again, that ties into what Alex said, just give them time. And another thing she also said was to make your students feel that their contributions are valuable. So allowing the differentiating instruction and podcast could give them opportunities to do that. Um, I know within, in my placement, 
just including small things such as manipulatives um, adds their focus and interest in the class and as well as accommodating the students needs. I really enjoyed um, Julie's part of the lecture and how she retaught Alex um, new skills especially math and she believed that you should teach for understanding and um, not to teach key words because it doesn't help students with understanding the question. It just confuses them and only help and only requires them to focus on the word itself. And she had to teach Alex how to reason. And she thinks that it's important to let students struggle but productively and make sure that um, what they're going with the problem that they're solving, if they're struggling, that they're productively doing it. And she said that it was okay that there were different ways to solve problems. Like when she was watching Alex um, solve a problem, she was doing it completely differently than how she would have solved the problem. And in my placement, my the math teacher didn't require specific ways to solve problems and let students use strategies that were most effective for their learning. And she also um, pointed out how it's important to give students time to think. And in my placement, the teacher doesn't rush students' thought process, and she guides them in the right direction if necessary. Um, do we need... So I think, like, one of the main things is to give the students time and to provide different resources for them to learn. It doesn't have to be taught or learned in one specific way. Okay. Exactly, and that's what she was talking about with allowing them to use different strategies and, like, different manipulatives to solve problems so that they weren't stuck on one thing because most students might have struggled, ugh, might have a hard time with a certain um, strategy and allowing them to use multiple ones to solve the same problem will be beneficial to their learning and help them be successful, especially for special needs students who need different avenues to solve problems. I agree. I also thought it was interesting that Alex said that something that helped her in her classes in school was simply just putting the desks in groups instead of rows. Mm -hmm. that it and personally, I learn better that way too when I can collaborate with like people in my class. Yeah, it was, it was interesting to see that like that works better for me and for someone that has special needs. It, like, it really showed me that sometimes teachers think they need to be students need to be in rows that they're paying attention, but it's really important that students can collaborate and work together and get ideas from each other. Yeah, in my placement, um, there's, I think, two or three students that are special needs, and I know that it helps them a lot, just the simple thing of being in groups. Um, another quote that I can pull from my article says that we can all learn from one another to improve our teaching and student learning. Yeah, I definitely I, learn a lot from my peers and my classes. I think that this Wow lecture was one of the most interesting ones, personally. Yeah, I feel like even though she had special needs, we could relate to her because she's close to our age. And like I said, you know, her being in our classroom, I wouldn't have even been able to tell. Yeah, and the way she told her story was really engaging, and it... Um, it was easy to like connect to what she was saying, like you said. I agree. Well, I think that about wraps up our discussion on the Royal Lecture. Alrighty. <laughs>